indeed james this poor buffalo is unfortunately flashing its toothy grin but not by choice anymore it's now unfortunately been had half of its face eaten off which is not ideal if you're a buffalo but if you're a lion you're a very very happy individual indeed you've managed to secure yourself quite a large meal now this buffalo must be quite fresh it, it smells but not too bad and just from the amount that's been eaten given that there are five adult lionesses here and six cubs is very little so i would imagine that it was killed in the early hours of this morning maybe even around sort of the game drive time so it really is a nice fresh meal and, and a really large meal for these animals and the Inkahumas haven't had too many buffalo of late the buffalo have been very very scarce in fact i was talking to some of the guides in this area and they were telling me that they haven't seen a live buffalo in four or five days so for them to have found a buffalo here is a bit of a miracle they i think needed to be more on the juma side where james has got that buffalo we've had a nice group of buffalo bulls that have spent quite a bit of time at juma so it would have been better to have been that side but as things go they managed to find one here and which is great for the Inkumas. i'm super glad that they've managed to find a good meal you can see that they do prefer going for the face they often eat the nose a little bit it's nice and soft so it's a great place for them to start when they feed now it seems like we've got a lioness that's about to come and feed as well so christina you're asking when food is scarce do we supply food for them well no christina we don't so this is a wild system and these lions have got to find a way for themselves and if it's in times where there's very little food around you'll find the lions will start to eat other things they'll start to target smaller animals and try and sustain themselves with that so you can see it's been a tough day for these lions but um, generally with the lions they are able to find food and we're lucky that we're in an area where we've got a number of different um, prey items available to the lions so there's no need for us to be able to, to supply food to them ultimately if we started supplying food they would lose that wild sort of lion ways and they would not be able to sustain themselves if we stopped feeding them because they would expect food more often and they would start associating people with food which could be then very dangerous particularly for us doing the job that we're doing as you can see there's no real sort of barrier between us and them and if they started to learn that we provide food it could then potentially mean that these lions get very aggressive so they're able to look after themselves and yes they might get a little bit thin and some of them might fall prey to malnutrition but that's just the way of nature weeding out the weakest you need the strongest bloodlines coming forward and so those that are not able to survive periods of lean food mean that they are not strong enough to survive in nature itself and so that's why we don't feed them but like i say it's also from a safety point of view for us as people we start feeding they start associating us with food and that becomes very dangerous and you can see that little cub is got the carcass to himself at the moment so he's loving it and this is very typical of the way cats feed cats generally will try and get in from the rump area and they start feeding on those legs and rumps and then they start moving their way up the fillets towards the head area and generally you find the neck and the legs are the last sort of pieces that are eaten out of this carcass now for these lions this carcass is going to be probably two three maybe even four days worth of food but by about three days time it's going to be covered in maggots and very very smelly and you'll find then the lions will probably leave it for the vultures and hyenas now the interesting thing though is that where these lions have killed this buffalo they are going to have a very tough time of it this evening they've killed it right on the western side of arethusa which is very very close to the largest hyena clan that i've ever had the pleasure of watching the clan is now almost 50 hyenas strong and they are definitely going to pick up the scent of this buffalo and they're going to start coming in here and i've actually seen this particular pride when there was more than just the five females that we see now there was actually nine in the pride in total with none of the small cubs and they got an absolute beating from those hyenas the hyenas chased them they all ended up into trees so if that clan of hyenas rocks up here tonight or even maybe tomorrow it's going to be very tough for these lions to hold on to this carcass so they're going to have a really tough time of it they're going to need to feed as much as possible now get as much nutrients as possible so that they end up with nice fat bellies that if they do get chased off that they still have got quite a bit of nutrition out of it but it's going to be really entertaining to see what goes on i don't think the hyenas will find it early this evening i think if anything it will be maybe late night or into to early hours of tomorrow morning but you can see it's been a tough day of eating buffalo 
everybody's passed out. It's like when you go to your favorite restaurant and you overeat. That is exactly what is going on here. So you can see there the lioness. She's all over the place, lying down, all the cubs there. You can see they really are lying quite close to us. They're just over my shoulder here, which is making it a little bit difficult for us to move. And look, you can see she's yawning. Now, yawning is a good sign. It often means that potentially she might wake up and come towards the carcass. They just get a little bit of oxygen into the lungs and, and then they come and feed. Now, with a carcass of this size, you would have found when it first went down, most of them would have had some sort of a feed. They would have come in and fed and there would have been quite a bit of aggression with the feeding. But now that they've kind of all had a bit of food, the rate of feeding slows right down and they're actually very patient with one another. They all wait their chance and they let one feed and sometimes you'll find a second joining but generally just sort of one at a time will be on the carcass. Now all the cubs are completely flat and very, very full at this stage. But it's so good to see that they're getting lots of nutrition because ultimately they're going to need it to get rid of all this mange that they had through the drought so it's really good to see that they've started to get good meals and they've really done well in the summer and the mange is disappearing quite quickly now you can see this female's now got her head up so Hector are you wondering why they're breathing so heavily well it's two reasons Hector one is that they are absolutely full with meat and so their stomach is, is expanded to the maximum. It's pushing up on their lungs and they're not able to draw nearly as much air as they normally will. So listen to the little cub giving mom trouble. So that was the growling was from the little cub. The mom went to go and feed, or one of the adult females went to go and feed and the little cub was quite aggressive with her. The other reason for their heavy breathing like that is much like if you've ever had a dog at home or a cat at home, when they get very hot, they end up panting. So panting is a way of being able to get rid of all the excess heat inside the body and the reason why they have so much excess heat is one because it's hot out here so it's probably this during the day today reached about 30 degrees which is a very warm for when you're covered in fur and that coupled with the fact that you're now your body is trying to break down this protein rich meal that you've had and really it takes a bit of time to break that down and so and lots of energy and that builds up a lot of heat inside the body and so the panting just helps get rid of that excess heat and cool this lion down so it's basically like them putting on the fan and helping with cooling the reason why